Things you need to learn, first of all, we're going to go through this step by step, I'll draw it out. This is just a representation, none of this by the way is to life, alright, it's just to give you an idea of how it all works. This is a motherboard, okay? So the motherboard is just something called a printed circuit board, that's all it is. On it is a method, so it's a printed circuit board. And it's a simple way to connect everything together. It, all your components in your computer will communicate through the motherboard. All right? So all communication will communicate through the motherboard. So on your motherboard, you're going to have a variety of things. One of the things is going to be the CPU, also known as the processor, the central processing unit. Another thing on your motherboard is going to be the RAM. So we will have a place for memory or RAM, which is called random access memory. So you'll have RAM, you'll have the processor, you've got the motherboard itself, and then you'll have various other things in there as well. So you're gonna have in there, you'll probably have some ports, and those ports will be including things like USB, maybe Firewire, depending on the type of computer you've got. Um, you might have something called the VGA port, which is for your monitor, video graphics, I think it's, I'm not sure the exact name, uh, the standing of that, but it's for the monitor. Uh, you might have a few other things. You'll see on the specification the list of things, the different types of ports. I will go over a bit more in a moment if we need to clarify. Um, you're going to have storage, so there's going to be somewhere on here, you will have storage. One of those pieces of storage usually is internal storage, which is your hard disk. Alright? The other type of storage you can have is external storage, and there's different types of external storage. And the external storage is going to connect also to the motherboard. And that is going to use some sort of cable to connect. Very often, it's a USB. All right. Now, a USB. Be very careful of what when you say USB from now on. A USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. It is a method to communicate with the processor through the motherboard. Meaning. A USB is not the little pen drive that you have or USB drive that you have. That the USB itself is the connection. The USB drive is what you have that you plug into the back. It's just people forget to say drive at the end. So when you're in an exam, don't say how can you transport data. Don't say a USB. That is the wrong answer. You've got to say a USB drive. Does that make sense? Yeah? Right, so we've got ports, we've got internal hard drive, we've got RAM, we've got central processor, um, and we've also got a space for expansion slots. You usually have a few of those, so we've got expansion slots. And in the expansion slots go expansion cards. And the expansion cards that you will probably see will be things like sound, graphics, and network, and we've already talked about network today. So the network card, you put an expansion card in, a network interface card will go into there, and that would then give you, it would actually have a little bit that would stick out the back with space for the ethernet cable to go into. All right? If you had a graphics card, similarly, you would have a little bit that sticks out the back of your computer that allows you to plug your monitor directly into that expansion card. If you had a sound card, you could then plug in different types of sound cable into that expansion card. All right? Why do you need those, you might ask? Because you've already got a place to put your monitor in, you've already got a place to put your sound in. Think of things that will require brilliant graphics. Your motherboard will have a very basic, simple graphics card built in, but if you wanted to play really good games, you need to have a graphics card with its own processor to allow the graphics to be processed in a fast and 
efficient way. Does that make sense? So the expansion slots allow your graphics to be a lot better, or they give you much higher class and higher quality sound. Maybe you can get surround sound from an expansion card, whereas if you have just a normal one, like we've got here, you just have the little earphone that you can put in, you wouldn't be able to put a big surround sound system in. Does that make sense as well, yeah? So your expansion slots will allow you to do something extra that your computer can't currently do. All right? Um, so that's the basics of that. The one more thing that I've missed off is obviously every computer will have, let's put it over here, a PSU power supply unit. All right? So you can't run a computer without being able to power it, quite clearly. So, how does it all work? That's something we need to think about now. So you've got a printed circuit board, all components connect, connect, spelled it wrong, through. Uh, the motherboard. So that's your circuit board and they all communicate somehow to the processor. So your printed circuit board is your motherboard. Alright, so everything connects to the motherboard. If it's built in, it's integrated, or it comes in through an expansion slot, or it comes in through a port. But everything goes into the motherboard. Why do we have the motherboard? Well, if you didn't have a motherboard, then we'd need a wire from this to this, a wire from this to this, and you just have wires everywhere. The motherboard has it all through little circuits so that you don't need all the wires. Does that make sense? And then actually, what you will have is things called buses that you don't really need to know about at this stage. But you have things called buses, which is like routes on the motherboard that communication can travel through. Which is why this is called the USB, Universal Serial Bus. It's a type of bus that allows data transfer. All right? uh, a key word that you do want to remember, or a key set of words, is data transfer. So communicate with CPU, if I put data transfer there, that's what that means. Does that make sense? Yeah? yeah. Right, so what we think now is how does this all work together? Well, if you have a device that is connected to your computer, you're going to have probably several USB devices. And in here, you're going to have input devices connected. And in here, you're going to have output devices connected. And then you'd have storage devices connected, potentially or you've got internal storage. Okay? So, input, keyboard, <coughs> output, monitor, through a USB. Output, sound, graphics, Okay, so we've got two output devices of sound and graphics. So I'm playing a game, I'm typing stuff in on the game or I'm using the keypad. It will go into the computer. That is actually going to go in to the RAM and then to the processor. Processor does a calculation. It comes back to the RAM. It will then go to the output device. Some of it will go to the monitor. Some of it will actually go to the graphics card first to then come to the monitor. All right, because the graphics card might do something with it. Some of it will go to the sound card to then go to the speakers. Does that make sense? So that's generally input, processing, output, depending on where the output will happen. A little bit more advanced for you, generally these types of things here will probably have their own CPU in. The graphics card definitely would. It's called a graphics processing unit, a GPU. Why does it have it? Because graphics do a lot of repetitive processing. But it's the same sort of processing again and again and again because you're rendering graphics. There's a lot of number crunching going on, which means we want to get it out of the actual processor 
which would slow the computer down if we had it all in the main processor of the computer. Does that make sense? So you have your own little GPU to do all the number crunching and rendering of the computer game if you were playing a game, whereas the processor would do other stuff, other sorts of calculations, not the graphical calculations. All right? Um, which is why all these gaming computers have these own, their own graphics cards. Okay? So let's go with just a normal action. You type a couple of things in the keyboard, whatever you're doing. What actually happens between the processor and the RAM? If you were running a program like Microsoft Office, you would have on your, on here, would be a variety of pieces of software. And you might have your operating system, you might have a few apps, and then you might have data, such as Word documents, etc. When you load something, so when Windows starts, what actually happens is parts of the OS are loaded into the RAM. All right? When you load a bit of Word, then parts of the apps will be loaded into the RAM, and then data will be loaded into the RAM as well. So have you ever opened up loads and loads of programs at the same time? and your computer gets slower, it's because what happens is your RAM gets full. And what's going to happen then is, so data gets copied to the RAM. I'll explain what happens in a sec. So data goes to the RAM, and then from the RAM, it goes to the processor, and the processor performs calculations. So the CPU is the brain of the computer. Quite simple. If you want a very simple definition, it performs calculations, it's the brain. And it also performs logic. So when you did programming, if statements, things like that, it does logic. Okay? So the processor does all the logic for the computer. It does all the calculations for the computer as a whole. Things will get copied from RAM into the processor, and then the processor goes back to the RAM to get more information, and then things will get sent to the output devices and the input devices and vice versa. So is this sort of bigger loop of all these communications going on? So input happens. Input goes to the processor, the processor calls for the input, it might be that it's asking to load something from a file, so we go back down to get the storage, that then gets copied into the RAM to go to the processor, gets copied back to the RAM to then go to the output device, and so on. There's all these movements happening. Why do we have RAM here? That's important to know. We could just deal with the hard drive. We don't need, in theory, to have RAM. The problem is, is your hard drive is very slow to access. All right? The type and makeup of the hard drive is slow. The type and makeup of many disks is slow. So if you were going processor to here, your computer would be really slow. So we have RAM because it's got, the way it's made is really quick to access. So we can access this really, really quickly in the computer. Why don't we just have RAM? Because RAM is volatile. So RAM is volatile. Volatile means turn off, lose data. Does that make sense? Yeah. So have you ever had a program, if I come over now, if I went like this and turned off that computer, what happens to all your work? Gone. Yeah, it's right. gone. It's because it's not been saved to the hard drive, it's in the RAM. Yeah. Okay? So it's in your short-term memory. So when you load a program, what actually happens is it goes into here. If you load your Word document today, that also goes into here. And then you work on it. All your changes are in the RAM until you save it. And when you save it, it gets saved back into the hard drive. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah? yeah. Now, Windows is very advanced nowadays. If you did turn off, what would probably happen is this will be saved somewhere in temporary storage regularly on your hard drive in a different location and then it comes up with the auto recovery. That's slightly different. In 10 years ago that wouldn't have happened. What would have happened 10 years ago is you would have just lost everything. Maybe 20 years ago. Okay? So 
everything's here temporarily and we're